Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Building a Nation, the Analysis Days. It's the first time I've actually done an analysis video after winning the Champions League final. Now, it is, of course, the next day. I actually ended up recording three videos yesterday. Uh, I was going to leave the Champions League final recording to today, but I was just so excited, I just put my suit on and wanted to get straight into things, you know? Um, not only that, um, my main concern about continuing, obviously, we are going to be continuing to save, do not worry. We've got plenty of stuff to do. We still need to get the Polish national team job and take that. That's going to be fun as hell if we can get that, but their manager just will not die. Um, and obviously we want to try and improve Poland as a whole and I'm very much looking forward to investing more time into that side of stuff now whilst we continue to try and improve our own sort of dynasty um, but my concern is that obviously people might lose interest given that we've won this but I, I hope that's not the case I like to think that those of you that are with us up till this point will probably stick around a little bit longer um, because I think I think we can still go deep into this save and bring about some real heroes uh, that could redefine uh, saves on this channel anyway so enough about that we're going to start with the squad report as we always do, Blazer Lisic, one of the best players at the club, still only 20 years old, and he already has 106 appearances for Polonia at the age of 20 and two international caps. Amazingly, only two international caps. That genuinely does baffle me. How on earth this guy isn't in the Polish national team squad is honestly a bit of a crime. Um, he's probably one of the best players in Poland right now in terms of actual Polish players and he's somehow only got two caps like he should have a hundred not hundred caps in total but you know what I mean like um yeah so just taking a quick look we're not going to be this detailed about everybody but obviously this here is not relevant because this is showing him as a you know it's not comparing him as an attacking midfielder unfortunately this year he's not been as good in the league it's fair to say he's got 11 goals instead of 14 and nine goals instead of 14 but it doesn't really even matter he's still put up big numbers where it's needed to be you know he's got 20 odd league appearances for each of the last four seasons um the guy is still his second best season for the club. And honestly, he's done more for us than I could have ever imagined. I still am trying to get him the gets into opponent's box whenever uh, whenever possible. Because I think that if he gets that trait, suddenly he could score 30 goals a season. I genuinely believe that. Victor Hugo was capable of doing that. And he's never quite hit those heights, but he's got that in his locker. He really, really does. Anyway, let's get going through the rest of the team. Uh, Militic, he'll be leaving in the summer anyway. Uh, I don't know if he's actually picked up. Oh yeah, he's joining Napoli. Uh, in the summer so that that's apparently happened i didn't even know that um ahmed mufta into the first team he is joining uh no he is not joining anyone of course he's still here that's someone else i was thinking of um he's had an interesting career really he's been with us for a very very long time spent most of that time out on loan um 1.3 million pounds the libyan is worth I just really pleased for him the fact that he's come to Poland and had a really solid career despite never really quite making it for us he's done a lot of good uh playing for, you know he played for paris fc for a season in the top flight in in France he's he's certainly no pushover he's just never quite been good enough to cut it here uh really but it, it's still been nice for him to do that and I, I might move him on to another Polish side in the summer look at his physical stats he's still only 22 remember that's how young he was when we brought him in uh Milos Nikolic his contract does expire and he's joining RZ in the summer so that's nice for him uh there's gonna be a few of these Alain Olivier um I, I think he's still got big things in his locker coming up. Now, interestingly, the potential thing has taken a slight hit, but that still means he's bloody good. And I still think this guy has definitely got potential to be uh, a player that features even more for us last year. And it's not like he hasn't played appearances. He's got 20 appearances for us this year in the first team. And I think he's done a, a solid job with that. When you actually look at his uh, record, um, you know, five assists this season in 10 league appearances. He's got nine assists while playing for Zag one season as well. Um, in fact, that was last year, I think. So he's definitely got what it takes at this level. And I think he'll be the perfect backup to Chabal next year because I don't think Ivanov needs to come back, to be honest. Uh, Juan Orozco, we all love Juan. Um, he's going nowhere as far as I'm concerned. He's one of the highest paid players at the club, one of the best players at the club. And he's still only 23, 13 caps for Argentina now. Uh, this year, four goals, five assists in 40 appearances. It's definitely a step down for him overall. Um, but I still think he's had a very, very good season for us and has just been excellent in general. You know, he's come up with important stuff where he's needed to. Perhaps not been quite as good as he was in recent years, but still. Uh, Panda, he, yeah, I did give him a new contract. He's played 23 times this year for us, mostly in the uh, league and whatnot, but he's still an important player to have around the club with these 150 appearances for us as well. Um, he's a bit of a club legend in some respects, really. Uh, Ibrahima Pereira, what can I say about my man Ibrahima? Uh, he came in midway through the season. He's got 10 league goals in 13 appearances in that four goals in the champions league and six appearances there you know 15 goals for us in 20 starts is about as much as i could have possibly hoped for this guy and he got those four goals against barcelona which absolutely shocked the system and really put us through but a great league record i think there's more to come from him with Fernino next year as well there's gonna be real competition for places uh poirier i mean that's his contract his loan contract i think uh what's his actual contract with monaco 
yeah, he's got a big deal. Part of me, honestly, is tempted to try and go and sign this guy on a permanent deal. I know it would cost us big money, but this guy has got the potential to be an absolute star. He scored in the Champions League final. He put in that game-saving tackle against them as well. And he was just an absolute rock for us this year. And I just wonder if, you know, instead of going and trying to find another player, maybe we should just go in and try and sign Ibrahim Poirier, even if it costs us £50 million. I think he is that much of an important player for us this year that maybe the best bet is to just go and sign what we know. I don't know. I don't know how much they'd want for him, and I, I'm actually scared to look, to be honest. <laughs> uh, um, that could also change. Uh, let's have a look then. Um, let's have a gander. The way I'm looking at it, is I'd be prepared to put a potential profit clause in. We'll exclude that one. But I don't mind if they want to add a potential profit one in because I don't think there would be much profit on this kind of deal anyway. Let's see how much they want. Oh! <laughs> 155 million. Um, Monaco, I've got some big ideas. Yes, this is what I mean. I just don't think we'd be able to do that. But maybe alone next year? I don't know. Maybe we can get him to really like us or something. That is... um. A bit out of our bargain range. Oh, my God. Okay, so, yeah, there you go. Uh, Diego Restrepo, He's. I think he's been a solid signing for us this year. Six goals and five assists since he's come in to join us. Still only 18 years old. He's hit the ground running for us and done a fantastic job so far. And long may it continue for old uh, Diego. Tobias Rosa. Um... Wow, they've actually reassessed him. He's really coming up in the world this year. Uh, 62 appearances is actually made for us. 25 in total this year. Didn't get anywhere near as many assists as he did in previous years, which makes you think that perhaps he just got very lucky in previous seasons. Uh, look at that. He got three assists compared to 11 the previous season. Something's definitely changed there. Interesting. Could be because we're playing a slightly different style as well. But I still think he's had a solid year, um, to be honest. Like, fair play to him. Uh, Mateus Saavedra, he's done all right this year, you know. He's still improving. He is very consistent. That's a really nice thing to have there. Um, six goals, five assists so far this year. Still, we, we I know we need to work on that right-hand side, but I actually do feel like with the likes of Saavedra and Restrepo, we actually have young players who are continuing to improve in that role. And I don't really want to get in the way of their development unless someone amazing comes in because they are still very good players that have got great potential for the future. Uh, Petr Shabal, love this lad. 26 appearances in total for us. Um... Six assists this year. He made some brilliant performances for the long run, and I still think he's got more time to improve. So I'm a huge fan of Petr Chaval, and he'll be staying, obviously. Diego Silva, love the lad. Uh, I think I gave him a new contract at some point reasonably recently. Uh, 26 appearances in total this year in all competitions. I still think he's a great, great player, and he's definitely the best we've got for that defensive midfield spot by a country mile. There's a couple I'm looking at to maybe bolster that area, but I still think he's been excellent overall. Uh, interestingly, his performances in the league have been a little bit below average no goals or assists this year but that's not really his game style but we do want to have a look at that um Trevario or Trevago as I've got him now um he's been one of those players that has actually stepped up this year um considering it's been battling between him and Gorosito for who's going to have that role Trevario has gone right under the the radar with that uh he's barely played in the Champions League six substitute appearances but 10 goals and five assists in the league he's been very much an absolute world beater when it comes to uh playing in the domestic side of things when you look at that compared to previous years you know he played 21 times in the league for us the previous year, and he's got 10 goals compared to none. He's been fantastic this year. Really much, much better. Uh, long may that continue, for sure. Uh, he's got, ooh, his contract is probably going to be up in a couple of years. So we'll need to make sure we probably try and extend it this summer. And the same with the left-back slot. We've got Thiago Veras in there as well, who hasn't played much for us this year, um, but he was definitely worth sticking around. And he did get a goal for us, though, off the bench in a league game. So that was quite nice for him. It's really good to have those options. Remember, we've got Abraham Apoku in that option spot as well. Uh, Vinjevic, I think is probably going to be leaving this summer. I just don't think he's got... I mean, 106 appearances in total. Fair play to the guy. But I think he's probably... He's injury prone now. I think... Yeah, he's probably for the best if he does move on this summer. Donny Waterberg. I don't know what more I can say about old D Waters. Um, One goal and one assist in the Champions League despite never starting a game for us. He's still got a long way to go with his career, but I really am a fan of this guy. Five goals and seven assists as well in the league this season. I, I think he's got more time to improve. He's still only 21. Plenty of potential too. What's this? Is this fickle? Uh, individual personality. Mm, yeah, okay. He's not very determined. That's one area that we could maybe look at. Uh, Leander Aberacine. I mean, what's more to say about this guy? 65 caps in total. Still been fantastic this year. Uh, 32 appearances in total. He, he's just an excellent defensive player. Uh, he does like a little bit in this side of things. We need someone that's like a mix of him and Rosa. Ignacio Bonavento. Still hasn't played that many games for us in total this year. He's still just around the club doing his thing. 
Um, I do wonder what his comparison is going to be like to Diego Silva for next... Well, we actually look at that in a bit more detail. Herman Carbayo uh, is on loan at FC Copenhagen because I just needed to get him out of the club, basically, because of the amount of wages that he was taking up. I think his contract is... No, he's still got another year left on his contract. Oh, God. He's on huge wages because he got those Poland caps, unfortunately. Uh, Mateusz Vigawa, 17 goals and 17 starts this year. You know, he's got six goals in the Champions League, so fair play to him. Only five goals in the league, but he hasn't really played a great deal in it either. Um, a decent number of goals in the cup as well, six there. All sorts of other positions where he's been getting goals for both Poland and for Polonia. Um, I still love the guy, of course. 142 appearances. I think he is now our record goal scorer as well. And it's going to be a while before anyone overtakes that. Although, Philip, maybe Pereira and Fininho have a, an idea about the one. Uh, Bunyman at Eichelkamp. He is online at Parma. Uh, I don't know what he's done this year for them. He's done all right. You know, reasonable enough. Uh, Andrea Falvela. Probably one of the worst signings in terms of value, I think, that we've made. I still think there's room for him in the squad, no doubt. But he's certainly not... Um, Someone said to me, like, why aren't you playing him based on the star ratings? It's like, but I don't really pick players based on star ratings. I pick them on their actual performances. And I actually think that he's maybe gone a bit under the radar this year. Maybe he needs to be used a lot more next season. He's good. At, he's, you know, he's got four years left on his deal. I think he's still got room to improve as well. And he's got pretty good abilities. He's just not the tallest. And his heading does concern me a little bit. And you know that we perhaps... And that's, that's my fault, though, because I signed him, after all. Um, Ruben Franceschi. He's capped under 23 level. He is in the Polish national team squad again. Uh, he's not got a cap for them yet, but he is in the Poland squad for whatever thing they're doing in the next international break. Um, so, yeah, he hasn't. he's still made 25 appearances for us this year. You know, only conceded nine goals and 16 appearances, but he has kind of lost his edge as being the number one man. One player who hasn't lost his edge is Alberto Freitas. Team captain, club legend, Alberto Freitas. Um, probably still the best player at the club. 121 appearances for us now. Yet another stellar season where he's just scored important goals for us when we've needed him to. Like that one against Monaco was so important. He's a world-class player as well. And he's playing for Polonia Vosheva. And frankly, now that we've won the Champions League, I don't see any difficulty in hanging on to him, really. I mean, he, he stays most of the time when we don't have that in our locker. So I can only see him getting more and more interested in the club. Jacobo Garcia, uh, main man in the midfield. Ooh, uh, didn't actually click it properly. Here we go. There we go. Jacobo Garcia. He's, you know, he's made a decent number of appearances for us this year. 136 in total as well. He's just an excellent um, player to sort of back up Orozco and Gorosito in that midfield. Nine goals in the league this year as well for him. Can we talk about that more than anything else? Um, definitely had his best ever season for us this year. Really holding down the fort when we're in the league matches. Nine goals is very, very good. That's a Roscoe-esque. Um, Jorge Gomez. Uh, he's one that's... He, he's a decent player, but I do think that maybe if we could get a big money move for him, it might not be such a bad idea because we are stacked in that left-back spot with Alboracin, Rosa, Apoku, Veras. There's so many players there, and he's 23. Brian Gorosito, what an absolute legend. 23 goals this season in 36 appearances. I mean, he's been the top scorer this year, I think, for us with 23 in total. 14 in the league, 4 in Europe. He's got assists as well. Like When you compare that to previous seasons, like... He's got double the amount of goals, and he still had a very good year last year, but he's really chipped in with so many more goals. Um, he's been a fantastic player for us, and long may he continue. He's still got a nice long contract on his hands too, which is even better. Federico Grande. I've been pretty impressed with him, frankly. Sixth, he's not been great in the Champions League, though. That is where his talents really have just not been able to shine. Like, not a single goal or assist in the Champions League matches um, is a concern. He's played eight games there, but he has got 16 goals in the league with five assists as well. And he's done a very good job of holding down the fort and scoring a few hat-tricks in the league. So I'm pleased for that, at least. If nothing else, he could be a good player for the league because he's not on huge money either. Uh, Christian Henningsen. I do believe there's more to come from him. The problem is he's just not been able to play that often due to the injuries that he's suffered. Hence why he's only made one... Uh, sorry, three league appearances for us this year. He's just picked up too many injuries this season. Hopefully next year he can have a better year and battle it out with Restrepo and Saavedra for some more uh, game time, really. That, that's kind of what we need, really. So hopefully that's not the end of him. Uh, Bartolome Idshak, I mean... He's still got a long career ahead of him. He's still made 14 appearances. He's got three goals and two assists in the league. Got one substitute appearance in the Champions League. I think we need to start phasing him into the squad in the league um, to give him that game time and get him nicely developed because he's got a lot of potential and we want to make sure that we try and use that potential to the best of his abilities. Juan Martin Iglesias, I've been impressed with him. You know, six conceded in 21 league matches is pretty impressive and only eight conceded in seven Champions League matches. I think he's finally stepped up to be that guy. But we're going to do the comparisons properly with that very, very soon. Uh, Vadim Ivanov, I think he's done all right for us this year. A few assists, you know, a few league appearances here and there. A um, few substitute appearances in the Champions League. I'm pleased with his performance. 
but we'll sort of see where he wants to go with that. Carroll, another of these youngsters that definitely needed game time, and he's got it to a certain extent. Six goals, six assists for us this year. Um, but remember, he's behind Gorosito and Treverio in the squad right now. So giving him that amount of minutes, I still think is important, and he will keep getting better. The thing that shocks me the most is that Carroll has eight caps for Poland at the age of 19, whereas Blaise Elisic, one of the best Polish players in the world, <laughs> only has two caps. What is the Polish national team manager thinking? I, I love this guy, but like, really, get Lisic in there. And we're back to old Blaise. Right, let's go have a look at the stats. So team detailed, once again, we lose out to Lechia and Gornik. God damn it. Penalties taken. Pogon had 13 penalties, but they only scored seven of them. And we probably should have scored more penalties than we did this season as well, which kind of sucks. Headers one ratio was sort of in the middle at 60%. It's within a reasonable margin of error, so I'm all right with that. Let's get rid of the form. 109 goals scored. Um, that's where we've really excelled this year. There's been lots more goals to go around. Cross completion at 19 is glorious. 481 crosses. I want to hit 30. Uh, sorry, 500 at one point. 13 goals from corners as well is excellent. Direct free kicks. Eight goals from direct free kicks. We've been smashing them in. Goals from indirect free kicks. Six goals. Look at that. Thir so that's what? Just between those is 20-something, what, 20, 27 goals from set pieces? If you exclude penalties as well. Uh, what's that? 35 goals from set pieces. Brilliant stuff. Pass completion up there as well. Nice where we want to be. Passes completed. Oh, Swanski getting in there too. They just obviously can't seem to complete as many. 84 chances created. Very, very nice. Shots on target ratio down at 43. That doesn't surprise me, but I think we're going to slowly improve on that one. And nearly 500 shots on target too. Our conversion rate is pretty low, but it doesn't really need to be that high when you can score 109 goals, to be fair. Dribbles per game. Wow, lucky you've got some good dribblers going on. Defensive. 15 goals conceded this year, so worse than before, but I feel like it's worth it just to play some more free-flowing football you know and remember in mind four of those goals were scored in one game by Viswa, who we did but eight past in fairness conceded from corners one not too bad direct free kicks one not too bad indirect free kicks one not too bad 25 clean sheets still pretty damn good in all honesty fouls made nice we're not very foul it's always good to see we don't have to win that many tackles because we keep so much of the ball Interesting to see Lecky are further up there, though, considering. Tackles one ratio. Generally speaking, we win them when we need to. Penalties concede. Wow, they didn't concede a single penalty all year. Viswa, not so good on that one. Average attendances. Um, we should be moving into a new stadium soon, too, I think, which would be nice. So that will hopefully move our attendances up a little bit more. By capacity, of course, 99%. Usually, oh, we've sold out every single home game this season. Last year, we didn't quite manage that. Highest attendance, good stuff. Lowest attendance, not surprising. Net transfer spend. We've still actually somehow, despite spending that much money on certain people, we've made £6 million. Um, as of course, and Lecky actually spent £10 million in total. So they've, they've certainly pushed out the boat. Salary per annum. What a massive surprise. Our salary per annum is now flying up, as you'd imagine, because we are spending huge money on players. But still, Katowice, £15 million a year they're spending on players. They need to invest big money this summer and make the most of their European campaign. I think if they play their cards right, because they, they appear to have now a manager and a squad that can actually do things. And I have a sneaky suspicion that if they play their cards right and carry on playing the way they were in the second half of this season, I think they could challenge for uh, the Champions League spots this season and really make themselves final get into the position of being a big boy in Polish football. Not only that, I think they could get to the Europa League group stages and actually have a bit of a battle there because they've got the financial clout to back that up. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they can finally do because I really want it to be Lechia, Lech, uh, Legia and Katowice. I want those five consistently being in Europe because that would allow us to build up those clubs with the coefficients and whatnot. Uh, and the money would be there as well. But we'll see. One thing I would say as well, which is going to be very useful, is someone told me that once we get to the league in seventh spot, which isn't this season, annoyingly, uh, but I think next year we can get seventh or sixth if we play our cards right, then the financial value for players in the league goes through the roof, which would massively help the other Polish sides as well, because they would then be able to, they wouldn't be losing their players for four million. It would cost like 20 million to get their players off them. And that would be massive because they do produce quality players. So let's move on to the uh, player stats, because I'm interested to see, because um, we've not really dominated this in the same way we have in previous seasons, it's fair to say say so looking at yellow cards we shouldn't have anyone on here i wouldn't have thought nope no one at all red cards we did get one red card with blaze lisic uh, and there it is naughty naughty man player of the match awards we should have a couple on here gorosito has got five lisic four and treverio with four as well distance cover per 90 minutes we're usually not on this one no not at all average rating right this is oh Towards the end, we seem to have really dominated it again. Lisic, Poirier, Freitas, Gorosito, Rosa, Garcia. Uh, my guess is that Mambimbi will end up winning player of the year, though. Although Polak has done a bloody good season. In fact, I think Polak did win player of the season, didn't he? I think he did. <laughs> I'm pretty certain I already saw that news article. Saavedra, uh, Grande, and Ivanov in there as well. Notice there's no Pereira. I think he just didn't play enough matches, unfortunately, which is why he's going to be missing from a lot of these stats. Headers one. 
Uh, probably no one on there at all. Yeah. Goals scored. We're going to have quite a few players on it. Grande and Gorosito got 16 and 14 between them. Lisic got 11. Pereira got 10. Treverio got 10. And Garcia got 9. We had five players get into double figures in the league and another player get nine goals in the league. That's Talk, we'll talk about spreading the goals around. Uh, that's what he liked to see. He obviously did play. Oh, there's obviously not a minimum number of... Yeah, it's this one that has the minimum, I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, wow. Shavinsky's bloody excellent in that one, isn't he? Christ, no, but he got eight goals despite only starting five games. Pereira, I think, would have a reasonably good one as well, but he's not played enough matches to count that. Gorosito got 169 shots. He's a very shooty man, it's fair to say, but he has hit a nice number of shots on target. Uh, the percentage-wise, though, uh, Blaise Alicic at 52 and Freitas at 52 as well. Nice to see. Conversion rate, there you go. Pereira at 20%. That's more like it. Uh, when you compare that, like none of the other strikers have even close to that. He's got 10 goals in 13 starts. And I think next year, he could, if he plays enough matches, be the first player of ours to crack 30 goals in the league, potentially. I, I don't know. It, we'll have to see what else happens. Uh, Grand has been on the pitch for 90 league goals, though, which is pretty impressive. Penalties-wise, we've spread the, the love about a little bit here. Uh, Garcia scored a few. Zviggy's not been on the pitch for a lot of these, which has been the issue. Assists-wise, uh, at least it's got nine, which isn't bad. Waterberg with seven. Olivier with six. Gorosito with six. Carroll and Restrepo in there as well. Key passes. Interesting. Gorosito. What a season he's had, by the way. Chances created, though. Lisic, 14 again. Um, wins that title. No surprises there. Good stuff. Pass completion. Ruben Franceschi and Iglesias. Both tied on 94. That's fine. Cross completion. Uh, wow, Lisic, 21. What an absolute legend. Uh, dribbles per game as well. Best in the entire league. Although Saavedra is not too bad on that one as well. Good to see. Team conceded. Nice. We should have all of these being our players. Yes, we do. Tackles per game. Probably not going to have anyone on there at all. Mistakes leading to goals. I would like to think we didn't have any of those. Mistakes, we usually have one. No, none at all. Nice to see. Key tackles. Nope, none at all. Key headers. Yeah, Grande as well. 96 key headers. Lisa got 43. Uh, 47 isn't bad. Interceptions? No. Headers one ratio. Usually we don't have anyone on here, but a Roscoe. Nice. Interesting. Interesting that Rursa's won more in the air than Albert has seen as well. Shots blocked? Probably not going to have anyone on that one either. Conceded. Uh, Iglesias with six goals conceded in 21 appearances is unbelievable. Uh, he has been so, so good this year. I think he has to be just dead cert start for everything. Although we'll do a comparison still just to make sure. And he's got 15 clean sheets this year. Franceschi did manage 10 clean sheets. Um, so we'll still want to have a look at that. Fair to say. Right. Now let's move on to proper comparison stuff. This is going to be quite a long one, I think, because I've been babbling a bit more than usual. Okay. So goalkeepers. Um, Iglesias paid more minutes. Fair enough. I mean, instantly you can see here. He's conceded less calls per 90 minutes. Uh, they've got dead same number of clean sheets. So Franceschi's actually had more clean sheets, but he's only really played in the league. So I don't know if it's a fair comparison. He's Iglesias has got a better average rating. Right, let's have a little proper comparison gander here because that's where we really need to be. This is the proper stuff that matters. You can see now that other than his eccentricity, uh, which isn't always a great thing in fairness, he dwarfs Franceschi in every single area, basically. He's not as aggressive. And he's not as good a leader as Franceschi, uh, nor is he as great with the natural fitness. But for the most part, he's pretty much as good as. But let's look at the statistics and we can turn this on to league so we can see a proper comparison. Um, Conceded per 90 minutes, vastly better. Uh, pass completion is basically the same and his average rating is dead the same. But you can see just how many less goals we conceded. Like he's played more games, five more games, but he's conceded three less goals. Um, Iglesias wins. It is as, as simple as that, really. Uh, when, even if you do it as overall, he's still got a better goals conceded per 90 minutes ratio. And that, to me, is all I really need to know. Juan Martin Iglesias is going to be our starting goalkeeper next season. No doubt about it. In fact, I might even be tempted to move Franceschi on because of his key player or first team. He might want to play more than he will. And I want to give Iglesias as much time as possible. So we might look to bring in another young goalkeeper instead. And I do have my eye on a few of them. But I don't know, because Franceschi has been a, an absolute legend for this club. Like, it's undeniable. I don't know if I can get to his actual page from this, can I? I can't really. Um, you know, he's played, what, 153 games for us in total over a long period of time. Um, really just putting up those numbers every single season. He's had a good year for us in terms of his average rating. It's just that it's probably because he's actually had to face more shots in the end. So, yeah, um, firmly in the camp of Juan Martin Iglesias is now our first choice goalkeeper. And he's eight years his junior as well. And he's still got that potential season that's higher. And I really do want to see where his career can take him. So let's move on to centre-backs.
Okay, so for the centre-backs, I've excluded Vinjevic because he hasn't played enough minutes. He's played like 300 minutes for us this year. Freitas, Poirier, uh, Pandurovic and Falvela have played enough minutes for me to look at their stats. So I really do want to see if I've completely mis misunderstood Falvela and actually he has put up decent numbers. We'll see because I'm prepared to be wrong because his average rating suggests that he's probably the third best, but we want to see that pan out. So pass completion, Poirier's up there, Falvela decent, Freitas actually the lowest, but we don't care about Freitas's stats on this because he has clearly been the best defender that we've had this season. It's undeniable, um, but he's certainly up there. Team goals scored per 90 minutes, interestingly. Falvela actually the highest on that one again, um, but again, that could be because he's played mostly league games, but still, we've got to take that into account. Key passes per 90 minutes. Uh, Poirier and Falvela decent on the key passes as well. Panda absolutely appalling on that one. Freitas pretty decent. Uh, he's better as a, just a defensive player, but Poirier has really put up some big numbers. But Favela, again, good numbers. Right. Team conceded. Pandurovic, Poirier, Freitas, and Favela is the lowest on that one. Panda's put up some really nice numbers there. Favela, if he has been playing in the league, we've been playing worse. That, that's what I would say. Like, if the reason that we've scored more goals is because we're playing league games, then unfortunately we've been conceding more goals with him as well. Tackles one ratio, Poirier, Freitas, Favela. They're all over a reasonable amount, but the two standouts are our two starters, um, it's fair to say. As for interceptions, it's a similar story. Freitas has got an ungodly amount of interceptions per game, but again, Favela, decent numbers. Undeniable. Um, aerial challenges, though, he has struggled somewhat, and I think that's probably going to be part of the issue here. Freitas has been godly in the air. Poirier, pretty decent. Uh, Panda, all right, but Falvela, again, and even less than that and i think that's the aerial issue is probably what's causing the problems now he's not going anywhere he'll definitely be around next season we've got four excellent center backs still um although poirier i'm going to try and get back on loan if not we might have to invest big money in a first choice center back like 30 million pounds if i have to i will do because i think that's an area we definitely do need to improve because pandurovic and falvella aren't going to get any better whereas someone like poirier if we could get him somehow he is an improving player and freitas is basically just an absolute god He's a god among men. He can do no wrong for me. When he's putting up the numbers he is in terms of average rating and performances wise, um, he is just worthy of my <laughs> worthy of my attention no matter what he does, frankly. I think he's the sort of player that could be like testimonial behaviour uh, at some point in this save, you know? So I think youngsters still important, obviously, and I want to try and find a first choice centre back. I, I really do think that that is an important area now. Um We've got options, but I think we can do a bit better, particularly with the pedigree that we've gained now from being champions of Europe. That's surely going to help us attract a different calibre of player, maybe for less money as well. We'll have to see. So, fullbacks. Okay, so for fullbacks, um, I've ignored Veras and the players are out on loan because Veras just didn't play enough minutes. We're really looking at, on the left, Abrasin Urursa, um, and we've still got options there. I know for a fact that we are really set in that spot because we've got Apoku and Veras coming through as well anyway. So I don't really feel the need to bring in anyone better because Abrasin is an absolute star in this team anyway. And Rosha is a very, very good understudy. So I'm super happy with that position. It's the right-hand side I'm really concerned about. I do want to still compare Abrasin and Rosha to see if Rosha's had a, a more understated season because it certainly looks like it on the face of things. Going to assist per 90 minutes, you can see Olivier has been godly um still he's been so so good and i really do think that him like he's the youngest of the bunch and he's put up the most assists per 90 minutes and that does say something but of course he has played i think he did play in the champions league though he started four games in the champions league didn't get any assists but still i think he's still played enough games and i think maybe taking him out of the team and putting vajim even of him when i shouldn't have done wasn't such a good idea um interestingly even have also outperformed shabal in that sense so shabal's going to need to justify his position still it's fair to say on the left hand side abrasin actually outperformed rosa in terms of assists this season so he's drawn that one right back. Rosa's had a bit of an off year and Alvarez had a much better year than he did last year. Because if I recall, he didn't get a single assist last year, which was concerning. Chance creation. Olivier, again, out in front. Even on Chabal, similar story. Rosa does outperform Alvarez, though. Uh, he's definitely created more. Uh, quite a lot more, if you actually think about it. But they've not created much either of them, to be fair. But Olivier, again, putting up huge numbers that make me really feel like there's a reason why he's got the second best average rating of our fullbacks. Um... It, it, there's obviously a reason. And look at this. Best pass completion ratio as well. Um... 4% higher than both of those two. Uh, Alborosin, much, much better than Rosa, though. Again, he's still holding down that position. Um, the biggest surprise for me is just how good Alan Olivier has been this season. It's not like he hasn't played Champions League games. Um, now, they might have been against weaker opposition. I think he played both games against Cisco Moscow, so that definitely would have skewed it a little bit. But still, these are worthy numbers in total. Like, they've obviously... You know, Chappelle has got nine appearances in the Champions League. Fair enough. Even of, I think, has n only five substitute appearances. So this is per 90 minutes, so it doesn't really make that much difference. Um, it's We can't ignore how good he's been in that. Uh, pass completion per 90 minutes. What about key passes? Again, Olivier, excellent. Chappelle, 
pretty good as well, even though much further down. Um, and then it's basically dead heat between Rursa and Alvarocine. So overall, Alvarocine is still edging out Rursa for the moment. But Alan Olivier has completely shocked me, and I think he needs even more game time next season. I think I want to get him... I mean, actually, when you look at it, he, Shabal, and Ivanov have got a very similar amount of minutes this season, and Olivier has completely stunned me with his performances, and that is sensational. Right, dribbles per game. Rursa, much, much higher than Alborosin. Olivier, again, winning it ahead of Shabal and Ivanov. He dribbles more as well. He's doing everything I want from my fullback at the moment. I want to see how he does defensively, though, because this is all attacking stuff. Maybe he, there are some big drawbacks to his game from the defensive side of things, and that could be why he's better to be used in matches where we are expecting to win, because it seems that he's definitely going to offer us more in those matches. So cross completion, how are we doing? Olivier, 23% cross completion as well. Uh, vastly better than the other two. Alborosin, again, slightly better than Rursa, but it's negligible. Olivier has been a god when it comes to the attacking side of things this year. I, I just realised how good he is from the attacking side. Shabal and Ivanov have put up okay numbers, but they've been completely dwarfed by him. Uh, right, defensive side of things. Here we go. Yeah, okay. So now we're starting to see the, the fruits of this. Rursa, much better defensively. Not much better defensively than Alborosin, but definitely noticeably better. Shabal at 0.47 um, has definitely done a better job defensively, and Olivier comes bottom of that one with 0.55. And if that is because he's playing in the league, then he's still conceding goals, even though he's playing in the league, which is a weaker situation. So definitely worth looking at that. Tackles one ratio. Rursa at 92. Alborosin at 89. Decent stuff. Shabal, 87. Very nice. Even of 82. But then again, you see Olivier, 71. That's not good. Uh, that is not good at all. Um, Shabal has done a fantastic job from the defensive side of things and has been solid going forward. Olivier has done an amazing job on the on the attacking side of things, but really does seem to be lacking from the defensive side. Let's check out the interceptions as well. Rosa, great. Even of decent. Uh, Alborosin, pretty solid. Olivier, Eh, Shabal, pretty bad, actually, um, in fairness. He seems to be winning the tackles rather than having to get that. What about aerial stuff? Maybe Olivier could put up some decent numbers there. Rosa actually beating Abrasin in the air, even off putting up great numbers there. And again, Olivier, bottom of the heap on that one. Okay, this is a very useful data because as it happens, I'm, I'm very, very pleased with what we've got in this situation. I feel like we've got... Shabal still should be the first choice player in that role because he's the more... Um, all-rounded player. However, I feel like Olivier should play more league games um, than he's been getting because he's been so dominant in the attacking side of things. Shabal, though, is an excellent player all round. I feel like Olivier could turn into one, but he's got a lot of work to do and he's falling way further behind than he needs to be. Um, even if I could try and get him back, I don't know. We'll have to see. I, I think I'm not really interested in signing players for these spots because we've got such good quality as it is. If I do find another young right back, I'll probably bring them in. But honestly, the left-hand side is so stacked with young potential that I don't feel the need. Unless, I, again, I find someone amazing. It's not a position I'm even going to even going to be focusing on at all center back and a young goalkeeper maybe a young right back but center back first choice is a, is a key factor for me right now um that was very enlightening to see just who's done well and why and where interesting right so dms okay so dms it's a bit of a weird one because diego silva has played most of the games um who else must have played in that defensive midfield role this season i'm trying to think who else could have even played there to be honest uh who else have we got bonaventa francisco Cervic. Mallet? I don't know. I honestly don't know. It feels like we've... Oh, I'll tell you why. It's because we haven't always um, played a defensive midfielder. That's the thing. So we haven't always actually used them because we've been playing two centre mids in some of the league matches. So that, that definitely is quite worth noting. Uh, okay, so pass completion. Bonavento. It's not a lot of minutes, unfortunately. So we have to be careful with this. Um, key passes, far worse. Tackles one, worse, but better interceptions. Better in the air. And we can see less goals with him in the team, but it is a... Diego Silva's not had a great season for me, for my money anyway. He's not been brilliant this year, um, but he's still an excellent player and we definitely need him around. I feel like we've got Glenn Cornelius as a backup potentially, um, as a youngster. And I'm looking at another guy that could potentially come in to play there too. So I don't really know what to make of this because we just don't have a lot to compare it to. Bonavento has played 500 minutes and he's been great with the passing and decent with his aerial challenges. Not so great in the tackle, but he's done all right, to be honest. He's not. He's just not so great when it comes to actually creating stuff with the passes, but I feel like over a season that might revert to more of the mean. I don't really know what to say about defensive midfielders. I do think it's worth looking into, though, in the summer, maybe. We'll have to have to see about that one. Uh, not really much more we can say about this, so we're going to move straight on to CMs, because we've got a bit more to talk about here. So this has been a bit of a tough one, because Orozco's played, for the most part, a lot of the minutes. Now, Gorosito has played there a couple of times, but I don't want to take that into account, because I feel like he's still more of an attacking midfielder. That's his best role. So that's where we need to be looking at him as that player. 
Um, it's really Orozco Garcia and Idchak that I've put up any kind of numbers this year. And they've all got a reasonable amount of minutes. Idchak could do with a few more, though, I've got to say. Um, so we can definitely look to give him that next year. But what really decently stacked in this position, but I do want to... We've got, remember, we've got Francisco and we've got Selovic uh, as two youngsters coming through. So I don't really think we need to strengthen in this area, particularly at the moment. But I definitely want to have a look at how the ones that are making some first team minutes are comparing to those that, you know are established in the squad so goals per 90 minutes garcia fantastic idshak pretty decent as well orozco's really lacked goals this season um and he's played a lot of league games too it's not like he's been absent from the league 22 league starts only two goals he's not actually that great when you look at garcia getting nine goals from that same period now it could be because he's taking free kicks or something is from just you no know, he's definitely not taking free kicks he's just been bumming and bumming him banging in the goals in the league and he's also been better for the assist as has idshak orozco's had quite a poor year overall um but Ishak is doing a very very good job as an understudy like he's putting up solid numbers his pass completion as well is right on par with a roscoe uh, as one of the best players at the club for that too and this is really encouraging same with chance creation uh once again Ishak and garcia great numbers and Ishak is is dominating that one not dominating but doing a great job there as well uh, it shows me that a roscoe has had a really off season and it's showing up in his average rating as well and i do wonder if maybe next year we should be trying out garcia and making him Maybe he's making a comeback to the first team. And maybe even Idshak, in all honesty. It could be just a bit of a coincidence. I, I don't know. Um, Orozco plays a lot of passes. And maybe it's too many. But he does play more key passes than any of the others. Um, so there is that. And maybe that's just because he's making so many passes. Idshak is a little bit off the pace. But he's putting up very, very promising numbers. Again, on the tackling side. He's not as good as the other two yet. But he is many years their junior. And is still within touching distance of being a very good player in that role as well. Similar on the interception side of things. Orozco has been very, very good at that. And Idshak is putting up similar numbers to Garcia there. Uh, in the air, though, he, that is his main lack of uh, focal point. He cannot win aerial challenges uh, compared to Orozco and Garcia, who Orozco is fantastic in the air and great at intercepting stuff, whereas Idshak just struggles on the interceptions and the aerial side of things. Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm pretty happy with the the options we've got there, particularly as we're now playing two centre midfielders. So they're getting more game time than they would be otherwise. And we've got options with Francis uh, Francisco and Serovic as youngsters that can come in as well. So I'm not overly fussed about the lack of uh, depth in the squad. That's what I would say. But it is interesting to see just how good Idshak's numbers are compared to the players that are like first team massive quality. I think he's done a phenomenal job this year of, in his short amount of appearances, putting up some really respectable numbers with a few goals, a few assists, decent passing, decent, uh, you know, he's done all right. Um, I don't think he's ready to be starting every game, but he definitely needs to be getting... I want to see 2,000 minutes from Idshak next year, and I think I'll be aiming to give him that because this is a, a key part of his development next year is to really sort of bed him into the squad because I feel like he's got long-term, could dominate this kind of world potential, potentially. I think he could actually be better than Blaise Elisic in terms of their overall impact, and that's that's really quite a statement. I, I appreciate that. Um, so really pleased with that, actually. I, I think it is concerning that Orozco has had a poor year, but it's good that others have picked up the slack, but I definitely need to keep that in mind in future when it comes to... Um, selection of players because he has had a bit of an off year considering how good he was in the champions league the previous year the fact that he actually was um named in the dream team for the champions league which we don't i don't think we've got that yet so we might still have players in it this year too and he won the second i think he won goal of the season as well so very very important right okay so let's move on to attacking midfielders okay so here are the attacking mids carol brian gorosito and treverio now instantly looking at this i'm already realizing that we definitely need to look for some more young quality attacking midfielders because just to show you uh if we just uh that doesn't well eichel comps in there the sepe uh and whatnot but when we just show you the b team options none there and then uh ramon griffiths is a jamaican guy i brought in for nothing practically and there's a few youngsters from the like b team in that we're, we're lacking a bit of um back up there because obviously we had kevin before so i think I will probably look to sign a couple of young quality attacking midfielders up in the summer. Not that it will be difficult to do because there's loads of them floating around, but we were stacked and I didn't feel the need to bring them in before. So just looking at goals per 90 minutes, obviously Gorosito is out on top, but Treverio isn't far behind really at 0.55. He's just played less minutes. So in fairness, he's done well. And the fact is, Carroll isn't that far off as well. So he's definitely worthy of his inclusion in this, in this squad. Like no doubt about it. Assists, he's actually been the best. 
He's got the best assist per 90 minutes record. And Gorosito's right in the middle there. And Treverio right down below. But that's really nice to see. And the reason for that is very simple. Carroll is an advanced playmaker type of guy. So he's got excellent passing and excellent vision. And that is why he's able to assist so much when he's in the team. Like, it's undeniable. He's a brilliant creative player to have in that role. And it really is going to show, I think, once he starts to get m better and better, that he'll be creating a lot more from further up the pitch. And will become. I think we'll become a lot better from that because he's a decent goal scorer too he's not bad like he's got nine finishing and really solid composure and decent stats for that error he always seems to get goals when he's in the team so i can't really fault him on that one and it's the same kind of story with his chance creation it's vastly better than the others purely because he is a playmaker and he's still putting up huge numbers though for a guy so young uh, cross completion is not really that important interestingly despite all of that his passing is actually the worst now that might be because he's trying out stuff that the others aren't willing to try and occasionally it's going to go wrong they're more focusing on the simple passes and stuff like that um as for key passes, though, interestingly, um, he's not actually the top of that one. Gorosito knows how to play a key pass. Carroll, still learning, but putting up decent numbers. I think he definitely needs to get more game time, but it is difficult with only one spot there. Um, so what I will be tempted to do at times next season is have it so that um, Gorosito can drop back into the centre of midfield to play alongside one of the others and maybe put Carroll in for some time up as the attacking midfielder in some of these games. I don't know. That's the way I'm looking at it. It's a difficult thing to balance right now because we've got two of the best players at the club are ahead of him in his position. So he definitely needs game time, but I don't think it's worth him going out on loan because I want him here because we've got great facilities and I feel like I want to keep an eye on his development um i don't think it's a, a loan is a good thing at this point not when he's playing games for poland i'm concerned about that headers one though carol amazing in the air it would seem like look at this headers 1.90 minutes he's an absolute god in the air is he taller than the others he can't be that much taller he's six foot compared to gorosito's 510 and traverio is very short isn't he 510 actually no so carol does have a huge advantage of being able to win stuff in the air for us which is good for holding the ball up it's fair to say uh shots on target percentage though Treverio loves to hit the shot on target compared to the other two. They do need to work on that. Unfortunately, it's our attacking midfielders that tend to take a lot of those annoying pot shots. So that might be where that's kind of coming from. They've all got good personalities, particularly Treverio with his perfectionist personality is very nice. Uh, Gorosito hits a number of shots on target per game. Uh, dribbles per game, though, Treverio is better than that. Carroll's slightly slacking on that one too. But the fact is they've all played excellently when they've been called upon this season and do different things in different areas. I'm happy with all three of them. I want to keep hold of all three of them. And I really really hope to try and pick up maybe two or three youngsters uh, to try and really pad out the squad with some quality in those areas too. Because I think that's really important to have players coming through constantly and to see where we're starting to lose a little bit so we can then focus on that with some signings. So that's definitely an area I want to look at, some youngsters for that sort of zone. Right, let's try wingers for the next one and we'll move on to strikers after that to finish things off. Okay, so wingers really, on the left-hand side, we're looking at Lisic versus Waterberg. Uh, Mufta hasn't played enough games to me to consider him an option yet. Um, so that's fine. On the right, it's, you know, Saavedra versus Restrepo versus Henningsen. Now, obviously, they're designed to do slightly different things, which is completely understandable. A decent level of potential across the board, though, which is nice to see. They're all relatively young, which is very nice to see as well. We're definitely focusing in the right areas there. So, goals per 90 minutes. Blaise Delisic dominating that one. Waterberg not far behind. Well, actually, he's still quite far behind, but it shows that he's at least doing a decent enough job in that role to the point where I think that in the future despite being older, I think he's still got plenty of time to improve and could definitely be an excellent option for us. Go, I mean, he scored the Champions League winning goal. That alone should tell you he's a worthy player. Uh, on the right-hand side, though, Restrepo definitely done a better job despite being younger, and Henningsen's not netted a single goal despite starting 11 games for us. So considering he's the one with the best finishing of the bunch, that is a little on the concerning side, but I think he's just had a poor season in terms of injuries, and that really has cost him somewhat. Assists per 90 minutes, though. Henningsen has the most, with five assists so far, and that's really pleasant to see. Uh, better than Restrepo and better than Saavedra. Uh, much better than both of those, in fact, because he's played a lot less minutes than the other two. So to see him um, playing as well as that from an assisting point of view, and it's no surprise really when you look at it, crossing and dribbling are both 16. I think he gets more game time next year and he could definitely dominate, particularly in the league, uh, that's for sure. Waterberg actually has a better assist record than Blaise Lisic, and that is saying something. So that shows to me that Waterberg's definitely a very viable option as the backup to Lisic next year, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, chance creation, though, it's very much the Lisic show. 0 0.74. People just aren't putting his chances away, it would seem. Henningsen, again, has created a lot of opportunities. So he's a very good creative player, and I think with more opportunities, he probably could score more goals too. It's very pleasing, is all I will say on that one. Uh, cross completion. I mean, again, Lisic is miles out in front of everybody else. You can see he's vastly better than Waterberg. Uh, Saavedra's decent on that side of things. Um, it's interesting that Henningsen's is so low. Maybe he just puts more in because he's getting in more positions. Uh, pass completion, they're all relatively decent. 
Like, nobody's really slacking that much. So Virgil's could be a tiny bit higher, but I'm still fairly pleased with that. Key passes per 90 minutes. Uh, Henningsen, again, out in front. Nice to see. Saavedra, Restrepo. It's interesting, actually, to see just how varied uh, stuff is for that right-hand side. It's like they are very, very different players who are like, almost like a... We've got an Allen key as our right side, where we can play different players for different things depending on what we need to do. Um, some players are more out-and-out -out goal scorers. Some of them are just pure assist machines, like Henningsen. He's a creative genius, it would seem. Uh, whereas Liesig and Waterberg just dominate basically they are fantastic players for the most part shots and target percentage Lisek great waterberg pretty damn solid too henningson needs to up that and that for me is the reason he's not got any goals because he can't seem to hit the target uh Saavedra and restrepo have got solid ones but henningson's is awful that's really weird he's got solid composure too i don't know why he's just so bad i think he must have just had a really unlucky season on that side of things. In the same way that Rursa had a really lucky season to get as many assists as he did, I think Henningsen has just had a poor season. Um, I think the injuries have not helped. He has spent a lot of this season on the sidelines due to that. And I think I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt for that. But look at this. He really hasn't hit enough shots on target at all. Uh, despite having such good dribbling as well, he hasn't been able to really use that dribbling. Whereas Lisic and Waterberg have both been phenomenal on that side of things. Saavedra's done pretty decently as well. These guys run more too. He's not had a bad year, but he's certainly not had a great year overall. Uh, the left side has definitely done better than the right. Saavedra and Restrepo have been much of a muchness. They've both been about interchangeable in how good they are. And Henningsen's slacked off a little bit. But I'm still happy with all of their performances. I think they've all been excellent this year. I think Waterberg, oh, if we could work on his personality a little bit too, maybe up his determination a bit by getting him in the right mentoring group with the right people. Uh, that would be something I could potentially do before he gets too high in the squad rankings. Um, maybe move him into that professional group that we've got to try and get rid of this um, because that could be causing some problems for us. Not the unambitious part of it, really, but the determination part. I think that might help him reach his potential a little bit more because he's still got it. It's clear to see that he has still got some decent potential, but he does need to move along a little bit with in terms of reaching it. Like Saavedra has hit the point where his potential is there and he's still got so much more to go. And that's why I feel like he's been an excellent signing because I think he's going to start reaching that in the next few seasons. Hopefully, anyway, if he keeps getting game time. Honestly, I don't really know where to go. I, I feel like if we were to find an amazing, like first choice, huge world-class right winger, I'd be tempted to bring him in for massive money. And I would probably have to sell one of these three to try and fund the deal. But I think that we've got enough potential in those three to where if we give them game time, they could maybe become that player rather than us having to buy him. But if the opportunity becomes available, I will not hesitate to make that deal because we've got big money in the transfer market. And as you know, I generally rustle up a decent amount of it each summer anyway. Uh, although we've got less dead wood this season, so I don't know how much transfer ins, uh, transfer money out we're going to actually have. I think it might not be quite as uh, much income this year. It might be us actually dipping into the bank balance a little bit more. Anyway, strikers to finish things off. Striker comparison, it's Viggy, Pereira, and Grandi. Like, they have all played for us this season. They've got a decent number of minutes under their belt. It's very important that we take a look at their performances. It's as simple as that. And we'll have Fernino to add to this next year. I'm definitely not going to need to sign any strikers. That's for sure. Uh, and we've got, remember, we've got two more youngsters at the club as well. Uh, we've got Martinez, and there's another guy whose name I can't remember, who is... Uh, came from Palmer. I just can't remember his name. We've got was stacked in this area. So goals per 90 minutes. Interestingly, Zviggy still the highest with 17 goals in 16 starts. Now, obviously, you've got to take in the fact that he's played a lot of cup games in there too, but still, uh, it's very good numbers and it's nice to see. Pereira, excellent record so far. I think he's done fantastically. 15 goals and 20 appearances. Grande has definitely improved over the course of the season, towards the end anyway, but he does need to up those numbers if he's going to be our first choice. You can see he's actually got the highest... like star ability and he has technically scored the most goals but he's played way more games you know 43 appearances this year um and you know more than a thousand more minutes than either of the other two and that's really what's dragged that down as for assists though he has provided a decent number of assists Pereira and uh, Zviggy have not really done that yet so Grandi has definitely got a lot of virtues to his game I'm just not sure about it just yet in terms of chance creation though Pereira is creating chances for people and maybe over a full season he would have got more assists Fair to say. Uh, also with the better on the crosses side of things. Pass completion, relatively close. The Pereira just lacking a little bit. Key passes, though, he has made more of those uh, again, which is interesting to see that Grandi's got the best assist, but he plays less key passes. Shots on target, and this is key. 60% of his shots are on target. That, for me, is the reason that he could potentially get 30 goals in the league next season. Um, that extra 12% that he's got over Zvigawa, and over particularly over Grande, he's got 15% over that. I mean, when you actually look at that, it's not even 50%. It's, it's more than that when you look at it. It's actually more like 33% uh, increase if you look at the actual uh, things sort of situations. There. So if you actually look at that, you could argue that he's probably going to get at least 25 if he hits the same kind of situation as Grandi next season in terms of minutes. 
Uh, and that's really good. I think next year Pereira could break the scoring record in the league for us. That's if he gets enough game time. And generally speaking, the league striker does still get a lot of game time because they get that huge run before the Champions League starts. And then they get huge swathes of it when the Champions League is still around. Um, even if we were to go all the way to the final like we did this year, which is probably why we struggled a little bit on that side of things. Um, shots on target per 90 minutes. Zvigawa does hit a lot of them and he has a lot more shots. Pereira has less shots on target, but he's more particular with his shooting. And that for me is quite important. He doesn't have the aerial threat undeniable um but that's not the type of player he is I, I feel like we don't want to move to a situation where we've only got Pereiras we need a mix of Pereiras and the other two and I think next year we're going to have that perfect balance where we'll have two fast agile striker pure striker players and we'll have two absolute workhorse uh target men that we'll have as well so we've got real options in the strike force next year with Fininho joining us uh, I'm totally happy with the way things have turned out in that side of things I'm more than happy for all four of them to be at the club next year I really don't think we need to strengthen in that area. So, conclusions. Young goalkeeper, maybe, if we can do, maybe be Franceschi on, don't know. Right back, maybe a young one, just to give us a bit more backup in that area. A first choice centre back would be ideal, but I could maybe get Poirier back on loan. DMs, I do want to look at another first choice, potentially, if there is one out there, who's got a bit of height. I do want the height. Centre mids, um pretty confident in that side of things. Attacking mids, I want youngsters, because we've got great first choices, but are our depth in there is a little bit lacking. Wingers, again, maybe, but we are pretty stacked. And strikers, we are completely stacked. And of course, I'll still be picking up other players that I might want to move on to other Polish sides as well, just to bring them into the country and get them adapted to it. So that's also going to be the plan. So, oh God, that was a long one, boys. Um, let me see what we got here. Okay, so... Um there's a letter on my desk from Specsavers. Not for me, it's for him. It's for an eye test. So the uh, word of the day, if you've got this far into the video, is Specsavers. Use it in a sentence. And uh, yeah, if you've enjoyed this, and if you've enjoyed the first 13 seasons of this, us winning the Champions League, drop a like on the video. That'll be awesome. And I'll join you guys uh, tomorrow for some transfer goodies. This is going to be an interesting window. The pressure is kind of off in a way, but I do want to make sure that we at least are competitive next season. That is for sure. Anyway, see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.